Hi, I'm Alan Rabinowitz, and you're watching RGTV, or Red Giant Television, if, as the dude once said, you're not into brevity. One of the questions I'm asked over and over again is, what's the best way to work with complex 3D compositions? Usually it's phrased more like, oh, good lord, there are just too many layers in here. This is getting impossible to work with. Now, I can't necessarily say that the way I do things is the best way, but I will say it sure beats a lot of what I see people doing, which is having all of their 3D layers in one giant composition. So, in this episode of Red Giant TV, we're going to cover a simple way to organize your 3D projects a little better, and in the process, we'll look at probably my all-time favorite plugin for After Effects, Red Giant Plane Space, or what was previously called the 3D Assistance from Digital Anarchy. Now, it's not my favorite plugin because it creates cool eye candy. Don't get me wrong, you can use it to create cool looking stuff. I've used it to create tons of motion graphics, as well as the opening for one of the Adobe TV shows, the Red Giant TV show opening, which you might remember from about 48 seconds ago, and even the Multimedia 101 podcast I did a while back for Creative Cow. Plane Space is a great, or dare I say it, essential set of tools for the After Effects animator working in 3D. It allows you to create layers that form cubic, cylindrical, and spheroid shapes, and for generally arranging 3D layers throughout 3D space, all with very little work. Some of you may remember that way back in After Effects 6.5, a few of the light 3D assistants were included on the After Effects installation CD, so you may even have some experience with them. And if you do, you know how useful these tools can be. But let's take a look at just a few of them and how you can create cool 3D compositions and then simplify things dramatically with a couple of tips that I'll share. And if you don't have plain space, you can always download a trial version from the Red Giant software website to try it out and follow along. So here I am in After Effects with a bunch of footage of actors already keyed out. I'm proud to say it's from a ginormous library of footage that will hopefully soon be available from my company All Bets Are Off Productions. Now, I've placed each of the layer's anchor point by the actor's feet, which has a slightly different location for each clip. So I had to do this manually for each one by doing the following. Double click on the layer, and then in the layer window that opens, make sure that the view is set to anchor point, and then move the anchor point down to the right place. Then just close the window. You can also do this by adjusting the layer's anchor point numerically in the timeline by hitting A on the keyboard, but you know it's a longer process, although more precise. In this case, I chose speed over precision. Hey, the economy is tough right now. I gotta cut corners, okay? Anyway, I wanna create a crowd shot in 3D where the camera moves around a bit. So first things first, let me select my timeline palette, and then I'll select all of my layers by hitting Control A, or Command A on a Macintosh, and then in the timeline, I'll click on one layer's 3D layer switch to make them all 3D layers. Then I'll choose Window Planar Assistant, which brings up the Planar Assistant tool. Now I should point out a few things here. The first is that unlike most other plugins, these tools show up in the Window menu, not the Effects menu. Also, if you don't have any 3D layers selected, the tools will be grayed out you won't be able to access them. So if you see that, one of two things is going on. Either the layer you have selected isn't 3D, or you don't actually have any layer selected. Hey, it happens to the best of us. I often forget that and have a moment of frustration that usually ends with a smack in the forehead and a duh. Oh, come on, you know you do it too. Finally, I want to mention that there are basically two types of tools here. The kind that are used to create 3D shapes, such as the box creator tool that we'll look at in a little bit, and the kind that are used to distribute objects in 3D space in different ways, such as the Planar Assistant tool, which we're going to use right now. So in my Planar palette, I'm going to define the dimensions of the area in which I want to distribute my layers. I'll set it to 1000 on the X and 600 on the Y. That means it will distribute my layers on a flat plane measuring 1000 by 600 pixels. I'm also going to choose the option called Distribute Randomly, which, as it sounds, randomly places the layers along the plane. It also disables the Distance options, which allow me to be more specific about how things are placed. Finally, I'll go to the Plane Orientation options, and there are three of those. These determine how the plane sits in 3D space. The options are XY, XZ, and YZ. I'll set the plane orientation to XZ so that it behaves like a floor. Once that's done, 
and I'm sure that I have all of my 3D layers selected, I'll hit Apply. As you can see, now my layers are distributed in 3D space. If for some reason you don't like the way it was distributed, you can always fix it manually by individually moving layers around, or you can just undo and then redo. In this case, my layers all seem to have moved up, but that's only because I moved their anchor points from their center to their feet. The advantage of doing that is that all the clips will have their feet sitting at the same height in 3D space. But since After Effects doesn't see the image, it only sees the anchor point, which it interprets as a center point, it's trying to center the height of the layers, which ends up looking like this. Now we could move all the layers down individually, or maybe select all of them and move them down at once, but I can easily fix this in the next section in one quick step. By the way, if you like this tool but wish you could distribute layers on all three axes, X, Y, and Z, check out the cubic distribution tool which does the same thing, except instead of distributing things along a plane, it distributes them inside of a cube of space whose dimensions you define. Now here's the thing. I want to animate a camera in this composition, and while this is a fairly simple composition, it's still got a lot of layers to deal with. I've worked on 3D projects that were way more complex, and frankly, as I'm sure you've experienced too, it doesn't get any easier with more layers. So let me show you a trick for reducing the clutter in your 3D compositions. I'm going to go into another composition, and then in the project panel, I'm going to take our crowd composition and drop it in here. I already have a 3D camera in here. By default, After Effects sees our crowd composition as a flat 2D image. Even if I activate the layers 3D layer switch, while After Effects sees this as a 3D layer now, it's still a flat 3D layer, meaning it still behaves like a flat image in 3D space, the same as any other layer that I made 3D. But if I also collapse transformations, and that's this little button right here in the timeline, it then brings the composition's 3D properties into this one. Again, to get full 3D behavior, you need to have both the 3D layer switch and the collapse transformation switch turned on. This can help solve a bunch of problems or just generally save time. For example, if you wanted to move all the 3D layers down, as we need to do here, I just have to move the one layer instead of many. Nice, right? One important note. Since we collapsed transformations here, all of the properties for the original crowd layers are brought into this composition. So if we want to give them motion blur, for example, as you can see, the motion blur switch is disabled. We have to go back into the original composition to turn on motion blur for each of the original layers. Anyway, now when I start working with the camera or add in other layers, even other 3D layers, I only have to deal with one layer instead of my original 40 or so. Now this goes even deeper. You can actually create 3D objects made up of 2D layers, of course, and keep each one in a separate composition, and then bring all of them into a big comp to allow you to create more complex 3D projects. For example, in the Red Giant TV opening, I have a TV sitting on a table. The table is made up of some layers I arranged with Plain Space Box Creator, and the legs were created with Cylinder Creator. I also created a TV with Box Creator, and then placed it on the table in 3D space. So here's how this kind of thing would work. In this composition, I have a 512 by 512 3D layer that's an image of the side of a crate. I got this image at freetextursite.com, which is owned by Doug Turner, a carpenter and furniture designer who designs his furniture in 3D. The crate image is meant to be used in a 3D program like Cinema 4D or Maya, but here in After Effects, it'll work just fine. There's also a bunch of other great textures at Doug's site, so check them out. Anyway, I'll select my 3D layers, and I'll choose Window Box Creator. In the Box Creator palette, I'll set the box dimensions to Fit Box to Layers, which means that Box Creator will use the dimensions of our 3D layers to define how big it is. Then, since I only have one layer, but need six, since this will be a cube which has six sides, I'll turn on the Repeat Layers option, and I'll set the number to five. Why five and not six? Well, hey, we already have one. Let's not get greedy and create more than we need. Gotta preserve the environment and whatnot. Actually, in this case, even if you typed 100, it would still only create five. 
You can type a lower number and then only some of the sides will be created, but not more than you need. But it does bring up the question of why you can type in more than five. At most for a cube, that's all you'd ever need, right? Well, it depends on how complex the cube is. If you set the box dimensions to user defined, you could also use the option called multiple layers per side, which allows you to create a cube made up of many solid layers, pictures, or video. So as you can see, this tool isn't just about creating a simple cube. Let me just set that back to fit box to layers. Okay, moving on. Just make sure that active faces is set to all, meaning create all six sides. Then with your 3D layer still selected, click apply. Okay, there we go. We now have a 3D box. Now I'll flash forward in time to where I've created five slightly different boxes in five different compositions and I'll drop them all into a different 3D composition. Then I'll make them all 3D, and then I'll also collapse their transformations. Then I'll choose Window Matrix Creator. Then in the Matrix Creator palette, I'll set the distribution orientation to X, Z axis as I did before. Then I'll set the dimensions to 10 by 10, meaning that it would create a hundred layers laid out in 10 rows of 10. I'll set the size of the grid space to 1000 by 1000, meaning that the 10 by 10 grid of boxes will be placed on a 1000 by 1000 pixel plane. I'll also turn on the option called place layers randomly, which means that the boxes will be set out randomly. That is not in any particular order. It will randomly pick a cube and then randomly place it somewhere in the 10 by 10 grid. Finally, I'll turn on repeat layers and I'll set it to 15. Now here's the thing. By choosing 15, I've said that there will be a total of 80 boxes because 5 times 15 is 75 and we already have 5 boxes. So that's 80. But by choosing to create less than 100 cubes and also choosing the place layers randomly option, the matrix creator will leave 20 empty spaces on the grid randomly. So if my 3D layers are selected and I choose apply, now all of our crates are arranged in 3D space. And if I look at it from the top view, I can see that there are a bunch of empty areas in my grid at random positions. Now as I said, this whole thing gets deeper. I'm going to take this composition with our 80 nested 3D compositions and I'm going to drop this into my main composition. Of course, I'll turn on the 3D layer switch and I'll collapse transformations. So now, instead of 80, or actually 480 layers if you count every side of each cube, I only have one layer plus anything else that I've added into this composition. I'll jump forward in time to where I've added some lights to the scene. As you can see, the lights affect the layers even in their nested 3D compositions. Hmm, this is like a miniature version of that last scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Anyway, now there is a ton of stuff I didn't get to cover in this tutorial, including the ability to add transformation keyframes when placing layers. That means you can have the layers animate from different 3D placements and shapes. Pretty cool stuff, but maybe for another time. Hopefully, now that I've shown you a few tips for working with plane space or frankly any 3D project, you can work more creatively and with less hassle. And hey, remember, if you don't have plane space, you can always download a trial version of the software and give it a go. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on plane space. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts, they won't last forever. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. That's right, just one week for the deal. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. See you next time.